template of a teapot that's very geometric, it's pyramid-like. Um, by making a paper template, you're able to see what actual shapes and sizes you need all of your sides to be. If you try to just wing it, you're going to have sides that will not match up properly. Okay, by making a paper template, it's going to be a lot more precise. So once you have a paper template done, you'll be able to then take it apart and use each side as a stencil on your actual slab. So the stencils be able to use them to cut out your shapes and then they will hopefully match up fairly <coughs> well. Get rid of all those pieces and this matches up with that. Okay, so it's going to give you a lot more precision than if you just kind of arbitrarily start um, cutting shapes and forms out. So with the slabs, I do suggest cutting out all of your <laughs> sides first and then moving forward. All of those pieces will eventually get fitted together. Um, if you decide to add texture to your slab using one of our rollers or stampers, um, I suggest doing your rolling first and then cutting out your shape. If you cut your shape first and then you press in rollers or stampers, it's going to end up smushing your clay out. Just because you're applying pressure, it's going to change your overall shape. So with the roller stampers, do your texture first and then cut out your shapes. If you are doing other textures where you're just you know, pressing in little details and it's not a lot of pressure that you're applying you can cut your shapes first and then go from there if you're doing any more intricate carving with the loop tools you can do that after you cut out your shapes if you're doing carving like this with the loop tools, I definitely suggest having your slabs a little bit thicker just so you don't accidentally slice <laughs> through your slab. Uh, and it also prevents your carved areas from being a little too thin as well. Okay. But you can get some really cool designs just by carving. So think about what you want your final sculpture to look like, and if you can incorporate carving, do so, because it'll just add a little more interest than just having a plain flat wall. Questions? I'll need that. Um, so with the slabs, there is a little bit of wait time. And the reason for that is clay, when it's <coughs> freshly made, it's wet. It's floppy, it's pliable. If I were to try to stick this wall up on this base and let go, it's going to fall over. So with slabs, you want them to be a little bit drier so that they are more secure and they're not gonna flop over on you. So I suggest making all of your slabs one day 
you can start doing your carving and then next class they should be a little bit drier where they won't just flop over on you. Um, questions on that? Okay. As far as attaching, I will pretend that this is a lot more secure. And also depending on your des design and the size and shape of your uh, piece, so all of this clay is the same wetness, but because of the size of this and the way it's going to stand, it's not as apt to flop over as this piece is. So you might be able to sometimes attach some pieces depending on what you're doing. Okay. But when we go to attach our slabs, there is a proper way. You always want to start with your base as the base. And all of your walls attach on top of your base, directly on top of. Not to the side, but on top of. And that's just going to allow it to be a lot more stable. Um, with your edges, you have a couple options. You can either keep your edges squared off and just attach one next to the other, like so. Or what you can do is you can cut a 45 degree angle on each of your slabs and from there attach them. So I'm just shaving a little bit of the clay off of that edge. So it has a little bit of a 45 degree angle to it. With that, I held my clay kind of floating off the table a little bit, just so when I use the fettling knife, I can really get a nice angle. So I would do that with both sides, and then they fit together. This 45 degree angle plus 45 degree angle equals a 90 degree angle. Okay. So this will end up creating edges that are a little bit more seamless as opposed to just edge to edge. Okay, so it's up to you to decide which route you want to go. Um, with either case, when you go to attach your slabs, you want to always, always score and then add slip. And then apply a little bit of pressure, then that will hold it. To add a little bit more support to where your seams are, I suggest adding, adding a little bit of a coil band-aid on the inside. So I just took a little bit of clay, and on the inside, I'm just going to smush that coil in. And it just adds a nice welded area to it. All the excess clay you can peel off. And then from there, you can smooth it out to make that coil disappear and blend it into your slabs. And no matter which route you go, if you're doing the 45 degree angle or the uh, regular edge to edge, um, both will work really well as long as you definitely add that coil inward. Um, with the 45 degree angle, a couple tips. Um, always think four times before you cut. So you're cutting the right edge in the right direction. Because um, if you cut your clay at the wrong angle on the wrong edge, the only way to fix that would be to redo your slab. 
So especially if you did a lot of carving or texture into it, if you need to redo that, that's not going to be as fun. Yeah. Um, I also suggest cutting your 45 degree angles on all of your slabs before you start applying them together. Because as soon as you have one wall up, to start cutting that 45 degree angle onto other sides is going to get a little more difficult. So just like with making slabs, cut all your slabs out at once, cut all your 45 degree angles at once. And then you'll be able to just start piecing them together. one after another. When you're doing the band-aid in, your seam always, always, always support your piece from the outside so that way it doesn't break, bend, or distort. on slabs. Okay. So, last demo.